Well, hey there. Welcome to my booth. My name is Jay. If we haven't met yet, the Neumann TLM-103 and the Sennheiser MKH-416. They're two of the most popular voiceover microphones used, particularly in home studios for voiceover artists. And today we're going to do a blind comparison between the two, then talk a bit more about the functional differences between using each of these microphones day in and day out from my perspective personally and as a professional who uses them. Before we dive in, if you like this stuff and you find it helpful and you want to support it, take a couple of seconds, click the buttons down there and it helps other folks find us and it's very much appreciated. Let's dive in. All right, so here we are on microphone A. This is microphone A. I'm about a thumb and a fist's distance from the capsule or, uh, you know, about four to, or about six inches from it. And there's no post-processing applied. And how do we feel about this one? Let's hop over to microphone B. And here we are on microphone B. Again, I'm about a thumb and a fist's distance from the capsule and no post-processing on this one either. How do we feel about this one? relative to the first, microphone A. Speaking of, let's hop back over to A. And here we are back on microphone A, and here's how it sounds. So let's see if we can get some sibilance to see if there's a difference between sibilance in the two microphones. Back over to B, and we'll test that one out. So here's microphone B yet again, and so let's see how sibilant this microphone is. I'm sorry if that's annoying, but... It needs to be done. Let's hop back over to A for some proximity effects. So we're back on microphone A. I'm still about four to six inches, and then as I move closer to about two inches away, here's the proximity effect of microphone A. How do we feel about this? And now I'll move back to four to six inches, thumb and a fist's distance away, and here we are on microphone A. We'll hop back over to B and do the same thing. Okay, I'm a thumb and a fist away from B, microphone B, thumb and a fist away, moving a little closer now, and now I'm about two inches away from the microphone capsule to give you a sense of the proximity effect if that's something you're interested in using. And now I'll back off a bit, and we're back to thumb and a fist's distance away from microphone B. We'll hop back over to A one last time. And we're back on microphone A. You know what, you love it. Here we go. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw I have a lump today, Piglet. Back on microphone B. One day when Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet were all talking together, Christopher Robin finished the mouthful he was eating and said carelessly, I saw a have a lump today, Piglet. Microphone A was the... Sennheiser MKH416. And by process of elimination, B... The 103. So, what'd you think? Do you have a favorite between the two? A preference for yourself? Do you use one in your studio? Let me know down below before I adulterate your thoughts and opinions with my own. But for me and in my use case, there are a few important considerations between these two microphones that I think would be helpful for someone to consider in use. Firstly is simply their pickup pattern, starting with the TLM-103. So this is a cardioid pickup pattern, which means it's a little bit wider and a little bit more widely sensitive. I have a little bit of physical flexibility to move around. And for me, this is important if I'm doing a character performance where I want to get a little bit more physically active in it, move a bit, and not have to be spending mental energy focusing on where my body is in relation to the microphone. The 416, on the other hand, is a super cardioid pickup pattern, which means it's essentially a laser beam shooting off. So if I'm doing an active performance and I move off axis even slightly, the level of my audio quality drops off pretty sharply. Now that's a double-edged sword. In performance, it's a little bit of extra mental energy that sometimes I'm not interested in expending in... Uh, keeping in this spot relative to the microphone, but it also means that the 416 excels in noise rejection, whereas with the 103, you may run into some issues. And by that, what I mean specifically is if you don't have a good isolation booth, either something that you've bought like mine here, a Studio Bricks Whisper Room, etc., or something that you've built for yourself, or maybe you've got a neighbor who just loves to vacuum, or they've got a dog, or you have kids or a spouse. Life 
happens and sometimes you don't want to have to worry about monitoring your recordings. So this can be a little bit of an extra boon in that respect that it's going to help you out in that noise rejection department, more so at least than the 103 will. Another really subtle consideration, the 416 does have a slightly higher noise floor than the 103. It's nothing that you're going to hear practically. It's just if you're using one or the other and you really, really, really want a hyper clean recording, the 103 has a slight edge over that. Honestly, 99 out of 100 people, unless they're listening on high quality headphones, are not going to hear Small thing to consider in your editing process, however. Additionally, on sort of that note, if you're thinking of the tone of the microphone, the 103 has just a rounder sort of tone to it, whereas the 416 is a little bit sharper. One way that I've described it somewhat successfully, I think, is you can think of the 103 as sort of a circle and the 416 as a triangle. It's a weird analogy, but I kind of like it. And that shows up particularly, I think, in the higher end, higher frequencies. The, four, the 103 here doesn't have as much of a sibilance issue on my voice, at least. I tried to demonstrate that in the samples at the beginning. Whereas in the 416, because it has a sharper frequency response, which for me ends up at being a little bit more sibilant, and it's also a little bit more sensitive to mouth noise, Again, those are things that you can fix really easily in post. It's just a bit more extra work that maybe you're not interested in tackling. That does, however, have a plus side to it. Many of these things are double-edged swords. The 416 excels in really picking out your articulation. So if you're doing a promo copy, a super fast legal read, the kind of things where it's like, do not use this drug. If you have to use this or this or this, contact your doctor if X, Y, Z. It makes it really easy to punch through those little things and it picks up every little detail so you don't have to uh, worry as much about really moving your mouth and articulating. This helps you out a bit there. That's not to say that the 103 won't do it, but this one's just so sensitive in that regard. Additionally, in sort of the promo world, the proximity effect on this thing is touted in the like movie theater voice. Here I am right next to the microphone and it's going to sound like this. And this is touted for that specifically. So that's one plus there. Whereas the proximity effect of the 103, it's still really lovely and it has a little bit more of that roundness and warmth to it. Whereas uh, again, the 416 is just a bit more aggressive, I would say, for my voice at least. So if this is something you're going for, the proximity effect on the 103 sounds like this. And then the last thing that I would say in terms of practical use that for me is something to consider uh, is the 103 is just a larger visual footprint. What I mean by that is it just takes up more space in my field of view, particularly when you throw in like pop filters. I like this pop filter because I don't have to worry about this thing hanging in my face. It also tames the top end a little bit more on the 103, which uh, for me, where I do a lot of long form narration, this just adds a little bit more warmth and takes the edge off of the top for me, which I like. But this is a lot to be in your face. For an example, this thing covers my whole face if I hang it up there and you can't see it. Whereas the 416, it just has a much smaller footprint. So if we do that same sort of test, you can see me, I can see you, and it's hanging right in my face. And so if you cant it to the side, it's taking up almost nothing in my field of vision. And then if I throw on the pop filter, I love using their included pop filter because it does take a bit of the edge off the microphone. It tames a bit of the top end and it's still just out of my field of view. So right now, my entire monitor is visible to me where I'm reading copy, working in my uh, audio software. So I don't have to worry about this clogging up my field of view and get in my face. But again, I don't think you can go wrong with either of these microphones. They're both wonderful, both sound great, and are both used ubiquitously. So you won't run into trouble in working with engineers or clients with either. Uh, so I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about this, anything else voiceover related, you can hit me up down below. Reach out on my website if you're interested in coaching. And if you'd like to extend your generosity and support this channel, these efforts directly, you can use 
the YouTube super thanks or buy me a coffee. Others necessary, both are appreciated. And until the next one, be well. See you then. Toodles.